Hello and welcome back to the allotment. So it's been a bit of a mixed week with uh, the weather up here. Been a bit cold overnight so things aren't exactly looking as good as they did before as you can probably see from the potatoes in the distance there. The uh, beans are doing okay, that's one thing. Might have a helpful harangers with us up here in the sun, like their son himself. So we've got beans starting to form on some of these, but uh, the potatoes are looking a little bit sick. It's quite weird how the frost's got these during the week. The earlies got hit by them, as did the second earlies, and some of the main crop, but not all of them. I've got some sarpo on here, and they seem uh, to be unaffected, which is a little bit odd. You see that the uh, flowers are now dying off on here, the bees have been doing their magic on them. So we've uh, got some uh, quite interesting potatoes here. Luckily it doesn't seem to have done any lasting damage on them. It's burnt them but uh, they're a lot better than some of the ones I've seen doing the rounds on Facebook in various pictures on there. We'll be taking a look at these rows of veg a little in a little while. So we'll come back to them. But they're doing well. They're growing rapidly in the past week. We've done a bit of spraying up here as well and uh, tried to kill the grass off around the bottoms of the trees. You see that the row in front of us and the row to the left the one sort of uh, to the left there is the Sarpo and the one on the right there is Desari. The Sarpo have hardly been touched. Those rows there I've managed to actually get through the hoe now and try to clean some of the rubbish out of them. Thankfully the frost didn't hit any of the courgettes or marrows under the nets there. The lawnmower did, but the uh, courgettes didn't. I caught the string in the lawnmower when I cut the grass the other day and uh, it made a bit of a uh, mess of it, shall we say. So the greenhouse is full. We've now got our uh, broccoli up the back there and lettuces. Sweet corn in trays there, new seed. Butternut squashes and the uh, other winter squash, which I can't pronounce the name of, begins with a U. Bush cucumbers coming well there, and our little tomatoes, what we took from side shoots. It's a bit of delay in getting this video out, it's been recorded seven days ago. Things have moved on a lot up here in seven days since I recorded this. So we'll see when I do the next video. I have kicked a lot of plants out of the polytunnels up here. Uh, hopefully the frosts have gone for good. I didn't damage these runner beans too much, thankfully. There's the old burn on them. The French beans there and sunflowers out of the greenhouse. And we've got all the pumpkins and squashes down here. Thankfully the frost doesn't seem to damage the blossom on the trees too much, so there's still some fruit there. Lots of courgette plants there, just slowly thinning them out. And then we get onto this mess. Still haven't made up my mind to what to do with these peas this end. I'm leaning towards uh, ripping them up and putting something better in their place of how bad they are. Sweet peas are doing okay though, but the runner beans is a different story. It's quite weird because it seems to have hit one then missed the next one in a lot of places up here. And some varieties have been hit worse than the others by the frost. So you can see the odd brown leaf in there. Then you've got a few good ones there, then a the bad one again. 
so very peculiar how it hit things but the further we get towards the houses the better it starts to look in the middle here it really did catch a few then we've got plenty of spares to put in their place still which is the main thing hoping that might grow back because it hasn't actually burnt the tip out of them but the St George and White Lady seem to have been the worst hit the Norma aren't so bad there's the odd one missing but nothing so bad as you can see the peas over to the right they're a lot better up this end as are the beans here the weed killers really start to work on here now and that's warming up again the stuff is starting to really start growing Still got to patch some gaps up in various places. Need to spray this grass around the outside with a selective weed killer. Try and thin the rubbish out of that. The mystery tree here is no longer such a mystery because it appears to have small plums or something along those lines coming on it. various lilies and things are now all coming through there that doesn't don't seem to have hit the gladioli when I sprayed the rest of this which is good let's get to the point I'll have to spray the greens in there again so I've spotted a little bit of a uh, white fly in there see our little fruit on this tree this is one of the original ones what were on here these are ones my next door neighbour gave me um, out of his garden so they got too big they seem to take an okay getting in desperate need of a rain up here again now I don't really want to start watering everything in that net They are looking good, that's the main thing. But no doubt, as everything up here is growing, the weeds won't be far behind them now, which is unfortunate. Still got to water everything in here today. So you can see everything's doing nicely, the celery, celeriac, and everything. My neighbour's sweet corn I've got in there for them. In them little green cells, and I repotted them because I couldn't uh, keep them watered enough. Things do dry out very quickly in here. But unfortunately, I'm not overly fond of that compost in those trays of greens there. But everything else is uh, okay. Just don't seem to be able to keep that compost wet. Courgettes are now coming into flower. So these are black beauty ones. tomatoes are flowering over here so trying to get them wrapped around the strings as they're going now lots of repotting gone on in here let's get these lettuces put in somewhere I'm struggling to find space at the moment for them And radishes are up down here, what have only been in sort of a week, which is a good sign. And now uh, since I repotted those leeks, they've done really well. As are the hanging baskets. These are looking really nice now. They'll be going out on the 31st of May, which is my mother's birthday. They're her hanging baskets. the birthday present being sorted so on with what we've actually got to do today and that is the painstaking task of hand weeding these rows of edge hair so we'll try and get all these weeded and 
we'll uh, time lapse some of this and see in a few moments. So a bit of a slow job as you can see that bottom end there the fence there has uh, got a lot of young fat hen seedlings in as you can see I've been ably assisted by the dog he seems to like doing circuits and laps I'm sort of thinning some of the parsnips out as we come up as well because that uh, first row of parsnips in is a little bit thick in places We've got Amsterdam forcing carrots first, then a couple of rows of parsnips, one of which has got radishes mixed in with it. As you can see the hound has decided he wants to come this end to watch what's going on now. He knows he's not allowed off the grass onto the planted area, so he will just lay with his feet crossing the line just to uh, Test things a little bit as they do. He knows if he comes any further, he'll be in trouble. He's been having a whale of a time now, he can come up here in the dry, giving him a new lease of life at now 12 years old. So, this bit isn't too bad weed wise for what's in there's mostly annual weeds whereas those other rows of carrots and onions and beetroot the other side of the potatoes well they've got um, stuff like horsetail in them which is not good at all what's in there so they have still got to be hand weeded at the point this video is recorded Doing my best to try and get uh, what I can out of there. Somewhat very, very small though. It's either that or spraying them with something selective, which I have got, uh, but I'm trying not to use. qualified spray operator I can make use of certain products that aren't available if I so wish that is I'd rather not use too many chemicals up here if we can avoid it that's quite a popular choice sometimes that uh, I'd rather use them and keep the veg healthy after spending all this time and money getting it to this point. Disheartening enough when I came up here during the week and found the uh, 
potato tops all black. Twice they were hit in the past sort of seven days on there. See, he's really keen to want to come down there and uh, assist, but we're not going to let him do that. So where around there, there is quite a large, thick patch of parsnips needs thinning. Otherwise, they're just going to bolt, and I'd rather that didn't happen. So we'll give him a couple of weeks, and we'll probably thin them out properly. Then give him a couple of three inches between each parsnip. I'd rather not have the tiny carrot sized things you get in the supermarket, I want proper big parsnips on there. All being well. You can see my plant pot there is getting full now. Luckily there's nothing prickly or stingy in there for me to pull out. Although there are one or two uh, little tiny nettles at the other side of the potatoes are spotted just very very dry on here which doesn't bode well for the potato yield So he's now decided, laying there, that there's a stone he thinks he should play with. Which he'll just keep throwing towards me. And hope that I'll throw it for him like that. In case you're wondering what I'm looking at, it's the fact that he's, um, Decided to run over the other rows of edge up that end. Looking for it. Being a typical Spaniel, he blunders in first and then looks where he's going second. Thing is, he's happy enjoying up here. He doesn't like it when he can't come out. So you see all the weeds in there. What I've just put in there is a bolted radish. There's some of them run to seed, so I've pulled them out at the same time. Some milk thistle in there as well, annual bindweed, deadly nightshade, fat hen, chickweed, a bit of annual meadow grass I pulled out, and some vetches, which the previous plot holder used to use everywhere as green manure, which has been causing me some big problems on there where they've come up. Pull them out because I get rather nervous bending down around them. So there's that odd chance you can bend over and catch your eye on them. We don't really need them in now anyway. So that's those rows done. So now I've got to go between them with this little tool. So a nice pot full of weeds there. I've got a wolf soil mill here what I'm going to use for cleaning between the rows, just tidying that up. You can see they're a lot cleaner now than they were when we started. <clears throat> so we just use this down here, the blade cuts through any weeds and the uh, roller, spiked roller on just levels up. Do you like this tool? Quite expensive when they're new. Don't even know if wolves still make them. They certainly don't make the five time cultivator I've got. You see how dry it is from the dust coming off that.
So I've got a wolf telescopic handle in the shed as well with the fruit picker on it, which was invaluable last autumn in picking the pears from the top of the trees. Just looks a lot tidier and smarter once you've gone between the rows as well. Once you get the hang of using this soil miller, it's a good tool. And it's done quite a lot of work in the time I've had it now. I have a feeling it's in excess of 15 years old. Maybe even 20 year, years old, this thing. If not a bit more. Can't remember if I've got it uh, in my teenage years, which would put it anything up 25 years plus. I seem to remember when it was new, it was around 30 35 pounds, the same as the cultivator was. So, I do like about the wolf stuff once you've got the handles, you just need to keep buying the heads, and you can swap them all around. the ridge of the cultivator. I've got a seed sower as well but a couple of the uh, discs have gone missing for that. It's one of the old style ones not the new red ones. Should have a hose somewhere as well. Unless it went missing in the house move in the past <coughs> which has happened for a few of my tools unfortunately. It looks a lot better there now. I'll do the rows of beetroot after we finish this video. It just loosens everything up and cuts the weeds through. You get very, very close to your seedlings with this as well without damaging them, which is good. See the old uh, dog is still mooching around down the bottom there. He wonders why he gets hot, he can't lay still. So there we are, that's all sort of tidied up round to there. So you see it nice and level between them now. Every other little weed is cut off. It just looks a lot tidier than we started. So that's where we're going to leave this week's allotment video. So for now I'm going to say thank you for watching. Hope you enjoy this video and I will see you in our next one from up here. Goodbye for now.